In this lesson, we're going to look at the Berlin Blockade of 1948. Why the Berlin Blockade happened, what were some of the events of the Berlin Blockade, and what were the consequences of the Berlin Blockade. Well, first of all, why did Stalin blockade Berlin? A blockade, if you remember, is when a country surrounds or cuts off something like a city or a port, uh, and basically prevents things from coming in or going out in an attempt to starve that country, that city, that area, to starve it into giving up. So that's what Stalin did to the western sections of Berlin. Well, in 1948, Stalin controlled Eastern Europe. If you remember, the salami tactics had finished with Czechoslovakia and he controlled Eastern Europe. America, however, if you remember with the Marshall Aid, it's wanting to make Western Europe wealthy for a number of reasons and pro-American. And it's looking like the division of Germany, that supposed temporary division of Germany into the Soviet zone, the British, the American and the French zones, it's starting to look more permanent. And in January of 1947, something that alarms Stalin, who does not want to see a successful, wealthy, confident West Germany, in 1947, the British and American zones merge into the imaginative t imaginatively titled Bizonia, um, something which further worries Stalin. Again, in June of 1948, the Western Allies introduce a new currency to West Germany, the Deutschmark. This really seems to be creating a new, independent, politically separate West Germany. And it's very alarming to Stalin, who is worried by the prospect of a wealthy and successful West German state. After all, in Stalin's memory, was what Germany had done in 1914 and 1941. Germany had invaded Russia in those years. So it's alarming to Stalin. So what does he do? As a protest against currency reform and the move towards a divided Germany, Stalin decides to blockade Berlin. Now Berlin, if you look at Berlin here, Remember, Berlin's in the heart of Soviet territory. East Berlin is controlled by the Soviets, but West Berlin is run by the other three powers, the Allied powers, the United States, Great Britain and France. So Stalin's, th Stalin's thinking is this. Because West Berlin is an island deep inside the Soviet sector, if he cuts off the two million West Berliners by closing the roads and railways to West Berlin, well, the people of West Berlin, very soon they're going to lack the basic necessities of life. Coal for heating, power and lighting, food and, and fuel and so on. And they're going to be starved into submission and probably accept joining into the rest of East Germany. So that's Stalin's plan. However, it's not doesn't work out as Stalin intended because something called the Berlin Airlift happens. The Western Allies at first are quite surprised. It's quite an aggressive action to, you know, cut off West Berlin, to block um, Allied shipments of coal, etc., moving into West Berlin. But how do they respond? Do they give in? Well, politically, that they're going to they're gonna lose a capitalist area to the Soviets, so that's going to be against the policy of containment. If they simply do nothing, then two million people in West Berlin would starve, wouldn't have the basic necessities of life, and probably would eventually gladly hand themselves over to the Soviets. General Clay, an American general, he proposes an, a military solution. He says, send tanks down the autobahn, break through the blockade with military force. Slight drawback to that plan in that it could lead to a major conflict and possibly even World War Three. That's the demerits of that idea. So what they decided was to keep the city supplied by airlift. Well, that's actually a lot more difficult than it sounds to keep an entire city of two million people. You're not just flying an aeroplane and dropping off a couple of bags of flour and a bag of sugar. You have to bring in thousands of tons of basic necessities that you'd normally transport by road and rail. You have to bring in thousands of tons of coal, paper for newspapers, food, all sorts of things to keep the city supplied. So it's going to be a huge logistical challenge. 
Tr for Truman, it is, however, a test of the containment policy. He is determined not to let the USSR take West Berlin. Well, ultimately, the blockade failed. The airlift was a success. And in May of 1949, the Soviets called off the blockade. It was seen at the time as a triumph in the West for the United States and the British, whose air forces had supplied the West Berliners. An astonishing number of missions, 200,000 missions during the airlift. And by the end of the blockade, a thousand arrivals and departures a day were moving into the three airports of West Berlin. An incredible achievement. Sometimes planes would land and they'd have to leave within 90 seconds. It was really an incredible achievement. One and a half million tons of food and fuel. And it proved that the West was determined to resist Stalin. Stalin saw the depth of determination of the West. And again, although he had aggressively blockaded uh, West Berlin, he was not prepared. The only thing he could have done was to fire on the Western aircraft moving in to try and shoot them down. And that, again, would have led into a major conflict. And Stalin wasn't ready to move into a major conflict with the West like that. It was a huge propaganda victory. Uh, great images you could get of symbols of Western freedom, planes bringing in chocolate to the children of West Berlin and so on. So a, a big propaganda victory for the West as well. And it really failed. Stalin failed to get his political objectives because it led to the very thing he didn't want. It accelerated the creation of a strong West German state and a very pro-Western state. After all, the West had shown that it was willing to defend West Germany against communism. So in May of 1949, West Germany, the Federal Republic of Germany, was formed, the FDR. On October of 1949, the Soviet Union created the German Democratic Republic. Quite confusingly, the German Democratic Republic has actually got a lot less democracy as it's actually essentially a, a, a Soviet satellite state. West German elections were held in 1949 and the guy you see on the cover of Time magazine there, Konrad Adenauer, was elected. Hated communism, very pro-West. So really, the very thing that Stalin didn't want to happen, happened. By the way, those are not the real words of Stalin. That's not really how he would speak. But, you know, the last thing he wanted, a powerful, capitalist, pro-American West Germany was created. Something else that happened after the blockade. Hardening of the Cold War front line, really. The blockade encouraged the Western Allies to form NATO which stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in April of 1949. You can see the countries in NATO on the map in yellow, so United Kingdom, Norway, West Germany, France and so on. It's a military alliance. They agree to band together and help each other in the case of an attack from the Soviet Union. It was heavily dominated by the United States. In fact, all of the leaders of NATO, which still exists, have been American generals. Uh, a real change for the Americans as well, because never before had the Americans been in a peacetime military alliance. Remember the isolationism of the United States before the Second World War. It was a measure of their determination to stop the spread of communism, to have a policy of containment. Um, it did mean a lot of stationing of American troops on the ground in the Western democracies. A lot, especially in West Germany. A lot of American troops stationed in West Germany. The USSR responded by setting up its own military alliance in 1955. Those are the countries shown in pink there. That was the Warsaw Pact, and we'll, we'll learn more about the Warsaw Pact later. I'm going to show you a film in a moment. It's just about three minutes. It's an American, American documentary, so it's obviously quite pro-American, but I think fair, you know, fa factually accurate and, and not overwhelmingly biased. And it's got quite a few interesting facts and bits of primary film in it, so let's watch that now. The first major application of containment policy came in 1947, when both Greece and Turkey became destabilized. President Truman requested $400 million in military and economic aid to shore these governments up against possible communist takeovers. The U.S. also sought to shore up free market countries and reinforce their orientation toward the United States. No region was more vital to U.S. interests than Western Europe, and the Marshall Plan poured massive resources into its recovery. 
But the real test of American resolve unfolded in a city that symbolized the very crossroads of the Cold War. Berlin, the former German capital, was jointly occupied by all four wartime allies, but it lay within the borders of the Soviet-controlled region of East Germany. In June 1948, the United States led efforts to organize West Germany as a separate nation. Stalin responded by blockading all highway, rail, and river traffic into Berlin, cutting off its more than two million inhabitants from food, fuel, and vital supplies. Harry Truman had a series of choices, but U.S. military commanders advised Truman to, to try to fight their way through that blockade, which could have led to really dangerous military confrontation. Truman could have ignored it, and essentially said, you know, so let them have Berlin. We got the rest of Germany. Uh, what he decided to do instead was a third option, which was try to fly over the blockade. I made uh, 208 flights from November around to uh, May or June of 49. Now remember, these were four engine airplanes. They carried a load of 10 tons whatever. And we needed 450 tons a day just to keep those people in West Berlin alive. I didn't know what I was doing and you know how important it was at that time. And it was a job you had to do working 12 on, 12 off, seven days a week. You really didn't appreciate it. <laughs> the only reason that I felt halfway decent about it was I was so mad at the Russians for doing this. That I, and those little kids, those little hollow-eyed kids. So I felt like, well, if we can save those little varmints, and when they grow up, they're gonna be pro-American. The Berlin Airlift marked a very high point in American Cold War history. It was an incredible technological achievement. And when Stalin saw that the airlift was working, he sent out signals to uh, the United States that he was ready to talk about this, and he lifted the blockade. Okay, so I hope you've uh, made some notes on the uh, the reasons why Stalin blockaded Berlin. Uh, I hope you've made some notes on some of the events of the Berlin blockade and some of the consequences of the Berlin blockade too. In the next lesson at school, we'll have a look at some political cartoons. So now, uh, good luck with the quiz.